I'm going to show you how to remember anything with Anki. Let's do it. So first we gotta go to the Anki website, hit the download button, and then click the installation that corresponds to whichever operating system you're using. And after you go through that installation process, you should see something like this. And it's looking pretty darn empty in here, so what do you say we add our first card? So go up and hit the add button, and you'll be greeted by this screen here. These two boxes right here that say front and back are called fields, which we can customize by hitting the fields button and make them look just how we want them to. But since we haven't even created our first card yet, we're going to exit out of this screen and look at it again later. This is where we type in what we want to see on the card, and then we have a bunch of ways to make it look pretty. So let's just say I wanted to know more about US state capital. So on the front, I wanted to say the capital of Montana, and then on the back, of course, we have Helena. And we can do a lot of cool stuff with this text. So if for some reason I wanted to embolden Montana, I would just highlight it and go up to the bold option and bam, it's emboldened. The same thing with italicizing and underlying text, you know how to do this. These next buttons are for superscripts and subscripts, just in case you're working with math or anything else that involves numbers and equations. So let's just say for example, I wanted to type 10 to the power of two. First, I would type in 10, then go up here to the superscript button and then type in the number. So two, bam, done. And it's the same deal for the subscript. All you gotta do is hit the button and then the number that you want, yeah. We could also change the text color by going up here, now it's blue, or we can highlight the entire text by going up and hitting highlight. But that looks pretty ugly and I've kind of abused this text quite a bit. But thankfully Anki has a way to forgive me of all my past transgressions. You see, if I highlight all this text and then go up to this eraser button, Bam, it just erased all of the formatting we just did, no matter how much we customized it. And if you wanted to get rid of some types of formatting, but not others, like let's say you want capital to be italicized, but not underlined, just highlight your stuff again, go back to our eraser friend, exclude italic text, and bam, it's still italicized, but no longer underlined. The next button is an unordered list. So if we click on it, we're now in a bulleted list. Same deal for this button, just click on it. Now you have an ordered list. Hit enter and bam, it's just gonna keep going indefinitely. Super useful if you need to remember multiple things. This next button is the alignments. I'm sure you're familiar with that by now. And then finally, what I believe to be the coolest part of Anki, you can actually add images, record audio, or even put videos in your flashcards, which makes them 10 times more memorable at least. So let's say for whatever reason, I wanted to put an image in my flashcard. All I would have to do is go up to the paperclip, select the image from my computer that I want, and there you go. Super simple. The next button is to record audio, and the final button is for equations. So if we click on it, we'll see that these are mainly used for math jacks and latex, which if you don't know what those already are, you probably don't need them. So let's move on. There are also shortcuts for all of these things, and you can see them by hovering your mouse cursor over them. We just have a few more buttons left, I promise. So this one on the far right over here, this is just the HTML editor, which if you're watching this, chances are you won't use it. So just forget about that one. And then this is the sticky button, which is actually really useful if you don't want to keep typing in the same information. Here's an example. Let's say I wanted to make 50 cards to remember all 50 state capitals. It would be really annoying if I had to type the capital of every single time. So instead what we can do is go over here and press the sticky button. And then after we add the card to our deck, this part will stay. So then we're free to put in another state, another answer, and we saved at least a few seconds, which really adds up if you plan on adding a bunch of cards at once. So that's what the sticky is for. So now let's take a closer look at the card type. So what we've been looking at right now is the basic card, which is just your standard traditional front and back flash card. But Anki actually has a few more of them that we can go through. Along with the basic card we just used, we also have the basic and reverse card. If we were to add this card to our deck, it would create two cards, one where the capital of Hawaii was on the front and one where Honolulu was on the front, which is especially useful if you're learning something like a foreign language. So back to our card types, along with the basic and reverse card, we also have the basic optional reverse card, which is pretty self-explanatory, basic type in the answer, which is really cool. We'll check that out right now. So type in the answer is exactly what it sounds like. So if we were to add this card with the capital of Texas to our deck and then go to it, click on it and hit study now, we get a card like this. So let's say I act like the average American who doesn't know their left from their right and I think the capital of Texas is London. It will not only show me that I'm wrong, but will also show me what letters I got correct. So the next time, maybe I can get a little geographically closer. And then if we get back to the card again and type in the correct answer, which is Austin, then Anki will make it green so we get a sweet dopamine rush. So going back to our card type screen, we have two remaining ones, close and image occlusion. Let's start with close. 
the close card type is super useful because it allows us to intentionally leave blank some pieces of information so that we can fill it in with our minds. And that's a really bad way to explain it. So let me just show you. If you're a really perspicacious individual, you may have noticed that we now have two new buttons on the far right here, which will allow us to do what the closed card type does best. So first of all, highlight the information that you don't want Anki to immediately show you, and then go hit this close deletion button on the right. I'm also going to highlight Powerhouse just to show you what we're working with. So after we add this card by hitting add, going back into our deck, we now have this card. This is exactly what close does. So after we guess what we think is after the, we'll just hit space and then let Anki show us. Just going back to this menu real quick, if you were to hit the other close button, it would do the exact same thing, but put each close on a different card. So instead of us having to guess two pieces of information in one card, they'll split it up into two. That's it. And now we're on to the last note type image occlusion. So double click that. And whoa, now everything looks so different, but don't worry. Image occlusion is best to use when you want to memorize information that's on something like a chart or a diagram. So what I did is I went on Google, typed in brain diagram, hit copy, and now I'll hit paste image from clipboard. And now we have an awesome brain diagram. And now what we want to do is cover up the parts that we want to memorize which by default will do with a rectangle, but you can also use an ellipse and a polygon if you want. So let's go in and zoom in here a little bit. And let's say I really wanted to know where the cerebrum was. So I would put a rectangle over it, hit add. And once we go back to our deck and check out the flashcard, this is what we'll see. The piece of information that Anki is testing us on will always be in red, even if we have multiple other rectangles in the image. So we know that this is the cerebrum, and since I don't have the memory of a goldfish, I remember that this is also the lateral ventricle. So we hit space, and bam, there it is. And since we drew two rectangles, Anki actually created two different cards for us automatically, which is awesome. So again, the red portion is what we're being tested on, which we remember is the cerebrum, and there we go, that's how image occlusion works. So now that we know how cards work and how we can create them, let's talk a little bit about decks. Dex, as I'm sure you've already ascertained, is where all of our cards go into. So if you have a large amount of cards or you're studying different subjects, it's really important to organize them by putting them into separate decks. In order to do that, all you got to do is go down to the Create Deck button and type in the name that you want. Let's say I wanted to learn Chinese. And now we have a Chinese deck. You can also create sub decks by dragging your deck into another deck, like so, and then hitting the plus button and seeing all your other decks. This is really useful if you're learning different levels in a foreign language, for example. Let's take them out of there. But it would take a really long time to create all of the individual flashcards we would need to say learn a language. So thankfully, Anki has a solution for that too, because you can actually download decks with, in some cases, thousands of pre-made cards that other people have already created. All you gotta do is go to the Get Shared button in the bottom left, click on it, and now we have a whole plethora of different decks that we can choose from. So if I was learning Chinese, I would click on it, look for one that we want, let's say this one, and now we can see exactly what's in the deck. And let's just say that we like what we see, so we'll go all the way down, hit download, and then run it after it finished downloading, hit import, do, 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 do. And there you go. Now we have a full deck that we didn't even have to create. And if we go in and try yeah. to study it, you can see that it's fully functional and very useful. Now, by default, Anki will show you 20 new cards per day, no matter how many cards you have in the deck. But thankfully, if you want to study more, you can do that and change this number. All you got to do is go to this gear button to the right of your deck and then hit options. So let's say instead of 20, I'm quite a studious individual. I want to do 50 cards a day. So I type in 50, hit save, and now there you go. And if you have multiple decks and you don't want to study the same amount of cards for each deck per day, just hit the this deck button and then change it to the number that you wish. And the awesome thing about this menu and about Anki in general is that you don't have to sit here and listen to some bimbo like me on YouTube explain to you how each individual option works, only the ones that interest you. Because if you click on any of these things, Anki is going to give you a very good explanation of what it does, what it means, and how or why you should change it. Keep in mind that the default settings work very well for most people, so if I were you, I wouldn't even bother with a lot of this stuff. The only thing you might want to mess with is this timer. Because Anki measures how long you study each day, and by default, if you take longer than 60 seconds to answer a card, then Anki will assume you're AFK, and will stop the timer until you come back. Which is a really cool feature and makes the timing of your study sessions a lot more accurate. So, change this if you want, kinda cool, or don't. 
who cares? I'm not your dad. If you're curious about any of this other stuff, like I said, you can go down, click on any of them, and Anki will explain it to you. A really cool feature about Anki is that multiple people can use the program on the same computer while having different cards. And this is done using the profile feature. So if you want to see just how maniacal I am about learning languages, you can go up to File, Switch Profiles, double click, and now you can see all of my language learning decks. Well, yes, I do all of these just about every day. And there's no limit to how many profiles you can have. So even if you have like 26 siblings, they can all have their own profiles on Anki, which is sweet. So the next thing we're going to look at is the browser window, which you can access by either hitting browse or just B on your keyboard. And even though it looks scary, it isn't that bad because we're going to break it down right now. It's composed of mainly three sections. You have the sidebar on the left, the card and note table on the top right, and the editing area in the bottom right. If you hover your mouse cursor over the edge of any of the parts like so, then you can choose to expand or shrink them as you please. There's also two distinct modes. If we click on this blue button that says cards in the top left, then it turns to green and now we're looking at all our notes. With notes being the different card types we looked at earlier, like basic, close, image occlusion, etc. The sidebar over here on the left makes it really easy for us to find certain cards when we have a whole bunch of them. We can look at the cards that are due today or go down here and look at cards that are in certain decks. So if you recall, our Chinese deck has a whole lot more cards than our default deck when we were just talking about state capitals and stuff. You can also search by note type. So say basic, close, there's the mitochondria again, and by image occlusion, and there's our sweet image. And this is where something called tags come in, which I didn't get into before because it didn't really make sense, but now that we have a great foundation, I'm gonna elaborate on it. Tags make it really easy for you to find and organize cards when you have a whole bunch of them. So for example, if we go back to our basic card with the capital of Montana, go down here to tags and say type in, I don't know, capitals, hit enter. And now this is tagged as a capitals card. So if I were to go down to the browser window, now you see there's this new thing here called capitals. And if we click on it, there we go. The card will show up. I also did the same thing with the Chinese card, just so you can see that I'm not lying. It's a great way to stay organized with Anaki. You can also select a bunch of cards at once in the browser window by holding down either shift or control. Control will select individual cards where the shift key will select all cards between you and the last selected card, like so. And you may have seen these flags thing on the left and been wondering what they are. Well, they're yet another way for us to better organize all of our cards here. So if we were to go back into, say, the mitochondria card that we made earlier, right click on it, go to flag, and do red, it'll now come up as red in the browser. Let's just do this really quick with another card so you see I'm not lying, pick a different color and now we can easily filter the cards by color if we need to so there's a mitochondria card and there is our other random chinese card you can also go through all the various options in the browser screen just to get a sense of what you can do because it's a really powerful program but since i don't want to waste your time with stuff you don't care about i'm going to move on now it's really easy to get lost in the sauce with this overwhelming set of options and customization that anki gives you but just remember that if you want to learn things effectively keep it simple and don't memorize things without understanding them the browser is the most complicated part of anki and probably the menu that you'll see the least quite honestly if you want to change how anki actually shows you cards you can do that by navigating to the tools section and then hitting preferences. And this section is pretty simple and straightforward, so I would encourage you to go through this menu and all of its options yourself so you can create the best learning experience that's right for you. Now let's talk about filter decks. So if you find yourself in a situation where you need to study some of your cards, but not all of them, say like a test is coming up or something, then you would create what's called a filter deck to tell Anki to show you the information that you want to study right now. The easiest way to create a filtered deck is to go to the custom study option, which you'll see after you click on a deck, and either hit review ahead, so Anki will prioritize in showing you cards that you've already learned, or by hitting study by card state or tag, in which you can select how many cards from the deck you want to study, and whether you want them to be new cards, due cards, or review cards. Hit choose tags, go to capitals, hit OK. And now you see Anki has made a special deck for us so that we can study only capitals. This is another reason as to why tags are so useful. Oh yeah, remember the mitochondria card we had earlier and how we flagged it as red in the browser? Well, now this little cute little red flag comes up whenever we see it in our deck. So now we went through some decks, studied some info, got some bitches. <laughs> so now that we made our cards, reviewed them, and became fluent in Chinese, Let's go to the stats tab to find out how we did. Now this is an awesome screen that gets even more awesome the more that you use Anki, as I'm sure you can imagine because more data is added. You can choose to either look at the stats for the deck that you most recently studied or the entire collection as a whole, which is just all of your decks combined. 
And if you scroll down, you can see at which days you reviewed and how many things you reviewed, the number of questions you've answered in your reviews, the card counts themselves, so the more things that you learn in Anki, the more mature they will become, your review intervals, card ease, hourly breakdown, and the list goes on. If you love data visualizations, then spend some time in here, especially after you studied a bunch, because it will give you great insight into how you're learning and what you can do to improve. You can also create filtered decks in a different way by going to here and giving Anki all the parameters you need to create filtered decks. But the other way we talked about is much easier, so I would just do that if I were you. And what's even cooler about Anki, I, I can't even count how many times I've said cooler in this video, is that you can customize it even further by adding add-ons. These are additional like quality of life things that other people have created for you that just either make Anki more visually appealing or make it work better. Let me show you an example. So if we go up here to tools and then hit add-ons, get add-ons, and then browse add-ons, we are greeted by a huge list of add-ons that we can add to Anki. Feel free to look through this yourself to find something that interests you. There's some really awesome and crazy stuff in here. Let's say I wanted to get this button colors add-on, which is a really popular one. All I would have to do is go to it, check it out. Let's say I like it. If I do, then I would copy this number right here, go back to our other Anki screen, paste the code in, hit OK. And now all we have to do is restart Anki to apply the changes. I also downloaded review heat map because it's my favorite. And now that we restarted Anki, you can see that it looks very different because I added this heat map add-on, which will show us on what day we reviewed stuff, what our streak is, what our daily average is, and a whole bunch of other useful information. There's also that button add-on that we talked about earlier, which we'll look at now. So we go in to review a card like normal and ba-bam, the buttons are all different, cool looking. There's also a few other miscellaneous things that we can do through this menu. Like if we go to the fields option, which, which I mentioned earlier, you can see that we can actually change the font on all of our notes as well as the size of the text. We can reverse the text direction, like if you're studying a language that reads from right to left, like Arabic or Hebrew, then you can select this option so that when you type in words, they go from right to left. And this other stuff, I wouldn't even worry about. You can also add, delete, and rename fields, like if we were to do this like so. Like if you wanted to add some audio, for example, then you could do that, hit save. And now you could have a front and back and also go up here and record something that you wanna be in the note. So that's the basic use of fields. And then if we go to cards, there's a lot of stuff here, but there's only a couple things we really need to keep in mind. The first thing is that we can change the template of each cards if we find that we keep making the same cards over and over again. If you know HTML and CSS, you can mess with the styling, but if you don't know it, please don't. I don't want your computer to explode. We could preview cards in this window and also flip the order of cards. So instead of reviewing your cards from front to back, you can hit this button and it'll make it so the back of the card will become the front. That's about it for cards. And if you really want to get into the nitty gritty of what this program has to offer, I'm going to include a link to the description to the Anki manual, which has a whole bunch of technical mumbo jumbo and different options that you can look through if you're that type of person. Drop a like if you enjoyed and happy learning.